Hello and welcome to Earth Juice. Coming up this week, a study revealed how venomous scorpions are nothing but an easy meal for the humble grasshopper mouse. And that got us thinking, how effective are toxins as a form of defence? This week it was revealed that the grasshopper mouse seems to experience no pain when stung by the bark scorpion. The scorpion's venom packs a punch that would cause you and me intense, searing pain. Yet these tiny rodents, who only measure about 10 centimetres across, are able to munch down on these deadly scorpions seemingly unscathed. Researchers at Michigan State University found that when stung, rather than feeling pain, these grasshopper mice actually experience pain relief. To find out how, the scientists looked at the nerve cells that transmit pain signals to the brain. In mammals, nerve signals are produced by charged particles or ions moving through protein channels in neurons. One type of sodium channel, NAV1.8, is responsible for transmitting pain signals to the brain. Now in the grasshopper mice, they've actually got a mutation in this channel, which means that the venom actually blocks the transfer of ions, which means that although the pain signal is generated, it never actually reaches the brain and no pain's felt. Evolving pain resistance sounds like a fantastic skill, but it's a risky business. We evolved to feel pain because it tells us when there's danger, which is why the mouse's reaction to scorpion venom is so unusual. Being toxic is usually a great way to avoid being eaten, but clearly that tactic doesn't always work. In many cases, animals are involved in a chemical arms race, where some prey evolve toxicity as a form of protection, and their predators race to develop a resistance. Nudibranchs, or sea slugs for example, are actually able to consume toxic prey, and they can retain the poisons, and in turn they'll secrete them as a form of defence against their own predators. Some of the most infamous venoms in nature belong to snakes, and in fact, snake bites are thought to be responsible for up to 125,000 human deaths each year. But nonetheless, there are a number of species that are actually immune to snake venom. Mongooses, opossums and hedgehogs have all evolved resistance to blood clotting snake venoms, meaning they're able to munch away on these deadly serpents free from harm. And even snakes have entered this chemical arms race. Some of their amphibian prey is capable of producing a very powerful toxin called tetrodotoxin, or TTX. And it's so lethal, it's more deadly than cyanide, and just a thousandth of a gram could kill me. Yet six species of garter snake have independently evolved a resistance. But what if your life wasn't on the line? What if you had to be resistant to your home? Clownfish, or anemone fish, spend their lives living amongst toxic sea anemones, whose lethal sting protects the fish from predators. Resistance to the toxins has evolved in some clownfish, but the major form of protection comes from a mucus layer over their skin. So the clownfish can live symbiotically with their anemone hosts. So clearly resistance to poisons and venoms has evolved within many animal species. But it's usually for toxins that cause death, rather than toxins that just cause pain. So in the case of the grasshopper mouse, the discovery of a toxin that specifically blocks pain sensitivity may be a first. Understanding exactly how this works could help with the development of pain relieving drugs in the future. That's this week's Earth Juice. Make sure you subscribe so you don't get stung missing out on the latest wildlife news. And we'll see you next Tuesday. The bombardier beetle produces two liquid chemicals which it squirts out of its anus. When they mix, they react violently, creating temperatures of around 100 degrees Celsius. But it's actually not the business end I'm keen on today. I want to see that rattle. Yeah, but I don't know whether it goes side to side or round and round or how fast it's shaking it and really where that sound comes from.